A group of young men in their twenties boarded ships to France in a time of turbulence, ready to learn new technologies and explore ways to save their country, yet concerned and uncertain about their future. Under the influence of the May Fourth Movement, many young students in China went to France in the diligent work frugal study programs around 1919. They left from Shanghai to start a difficult 40-day journey by sea before arriving at Marseille, France. Between March 1919 and the end of 1920, a total of 20 groups of students left China for France. More than 1,800 young students went to schools or worked in factories at a place far away from home. The diligent work frugal study movement attracted students across China. Including members from Xinmin Institute, organized by Mao Zedong and Cai Hesan. Strenuous as their study work experience was, it soon became an unsustainable luxury. After the First World War, France, among other leading European economies, sank into a deeply economic crisis. Many students found it extremely difficult to make ends meet, and were forced to make changes. The Chinese students staged protests for their livelihoods and opportunities to study, which I bet were fruitless. The failure of a series of struggle awakened those students. Some of them realized the necessity of establishing a rigorous communist organization that is ready to fight. C'est une histoire fantastique, fantastique. En 1920, des grèves éclatent partout. Donc il y a en France une atmosphère sociale très agitée. Tout cela rejaillit chez ces, ces jeunes Chinois. En plus, pensaient qu'ils travaillent en usine. Donc ces jeunes qui étaient arrivés comme cela ici, eh bien finalement, eux vont passer rapidement du travail à l'analyse politique, vont de plus en plus être séduits par le marxisme. Au fond, tous ces tous ces jeunes là, eh bien ils ne peuvent pas imaginer que 20 ans, 25, 30 ans plus tard, ils joueront un rôle très important dans la République populaire chinoise à partir de 1949. Zhou Enlai said in a published article, "When a road comes to an end, when should change its direction? When the power is frail, when should unite with others?" In 1920, Cai Hesan, who later became a CPC leader, wrote three long letters from France to Mao Zedong, proposing to formally establish a communist party. Mao wrote back, saying, "You are highly perceptive. I agree with every single word of it." Sa Yezhen, lui, est un Chinois très politisé, hein, qui lit beaucoup, qui, qui traduit、euh, le cap- les œuvres de Karl Marx. In June 1922, Chinese Communist Youth League in Europe convened in the Bois de Boulogne, in the western suburb of Paris, and announced the establishment of the Chinese Youth Communist Party in Europe. Their workplace was in the small Parisian hotel which Zhou Enlai lived in. To promote Marxism-Leninism among students and workers, they started to publish a monthly named "Youth," which often carried articles by Zhou Enlai. The magazine later changed its name into "Chi Guang," or "Red Light," and started to feature short critiques. Some of the young communists went to the Soviet Union to continue their studies, and some returned to China to participate in revolutions. The diligent work frugal study movement came to a close, but the revolutionary undertakings of these twenty-somethings had just started. From China to France and back to China, the journey they made a century ago have impacted China in its unique way.